Welcome to vanofaction.com where we're taking our 2018 Dodge Promaster van and turning it into a camper. Right now I'm in the basement because in this video we're talking about running the hot and cold water lines. We're going to install the pump. We're going to get that, that reservoir and this hot water tank hooked up together. Should be fun. Let's get started. So I think step number one for me is to try and figure out exactly how I'm going to get the water tank, the water pump, to feed the cold water system and the hot water tank and then in turn feed the hot water system so it all it all talks together properly and i'm really glad i decided to do this first because when i first looked at this pump i thought i could mount it this is perfect i can mount it like this i can come off of this nut that's really close to the the wall do a little loop to reduce the vibration come off this side of the pump do another little loop have a T that went to feed the cold water, and then come underneath here and feed the hot water tank, and then carry on from there. That would have been so slick, but that's not possible because when I looked at the pump, it turns out, you may not be able to see it, I'll take a picture, there's an arrow on the pump showing me the direction of the flow. So this pump is to have the, the water, is designed to have the water going this way into the tank, not out of the tank. So that's not going to work. I could turn it this way and come off of this nut, but then I get all those pipes and things out here and in the way, really. I don't want them that far out from the wall. And I think I can see them just being something that's either going to get damaged or take up space. But looking at it, the literature in the in the on the in the manual, I had to open the manual, and it looks like you can mount it in any position. So if I put it up and down this way, it'll work. I can take the water out come through, come out, come around, and go that way. It's not exactly what I was hoping for, but it'll work. I want to try and isolate this the bottom of the pump from the body of the van to reduce the vibration. So I'm going to have to give that a little thought too. But I think this should work. Okay, so now I have the line coming off the tank through the pump in the right direction out of the pump. And if I put this T on here, this will be cold water. So this part of the T will go straight up and connect to the cold water pipe where it'll branch off in another T. You want to go to the front and want to go to the back. And this side of the T could come over in one piece. So if I can bend it properly, one piece come over bent and connect to the cold water feed for the hot water tank. That'd be great. The hot water tank will come out just above that pipe to a 90 and go up the wall to the, to the, uh, well, to the hot water line where it'll tee off and want to go to the front, want to go to the back. Now, both of these can't be on the wall because when they get to the top, one's going to have to be offset just a little bit. So I'll bring one in just a little weeny bit. Probably better that way. Okay. The trick of doing this is just to try and get your head around to be able to see it finished and, and then just attach one piece at a time and try to make that work. So the first thing I'm going to do is anchor this this T in place. No, the first thing I'm going to do is, is get this piece from here to here. Now this is the pattern that I have, but it's not possible to, to bend it exactly the, that tight. So what I've done is I I traced that shape onto a piece of wood, and then I took my pipe and I bent it, heated it slowly, and bent it to the shape. Now I did get a bit of a knuckle here. I don't, don't know if that's a bad thing or not. If anybody knows, leave a comment for me. I read everything, but I was a little bit impatient. You see, I got a nice smooth bend here. I got a little bit impatient there and got a bit of a knuckle, but I think it should be fine. Let me show you how it's gonna fit. Now, the first thing I want to do is put the rings on this, put the end of this pipe. I don't want to forget the little crimper things. This is all going to come apart again, but I like to try and assemble it as completely as I can. When you're, doing, when you're working with something that you've never worked with before, you don't know what you're doing, so you just got to take it one step at a time. But just like scribing, you have to anchor things as you go to make sure they're all going to fit right. So now the T will go in here like this. And these uh, little hoses, I can't use the crimper. I'll have to get really small pipe clamps for that. And then this piece will go on here. 
Okay, and then this piece will go on here. Like that. Yeah, now that looks like it's going to be just about pretty neat. It's like that, I think. I think that's going to work. I'm going to try putting... I made up another little clip and again I put another a little bit of weather stripping on the inside just to take any vibration out of it. A little cushion. It's gonna have to be about like that. And right away I can see I made a mistake the first time around. I'm only gonna put one screw in there because that will be fine for now. That's not gonna move too much. That's good. Now this piece is going to come off of here and right away I can see I didn't come up high enough. I thought I had allowed enough height but I hadn't. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm going to do... That looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is extend this piece a little bit more. Alright, I'm back here. I've made my piece up put my clip rings on them, or whatever they call those things, and I'm going to put this on. Put this on. And we'll see if it's going to be okay for height. It's not going to be bad. I could probably fudge that and it'll be just fine. Well, yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all. It might be, be coming in a little bit too, but you know what? Did you see what I just did? Good God, I can't believe it. Holy cow. Leave a comment down below if you noticed it right away. Let me know what the, what the timestamp was, because I tell you what, I didn't see it for the longest time. Let's just have a look here, because that's just... While, while I was doing this, I had an idea that maybe I could take these and have them go in the other direction. So take this off. In fact, I didn't even notice it until I was editing the video pieces I put together. Thank God I didn't get this all done in one day. We'll talk about it at the end. I wonder if I can do that. You know, that's pretty cool. Oh, that looks even better. Good God. Take a look at this. That looks much better. And that's the wonderful thing about doing this. When you're doing something, you're not sure what you're doing. Put it together dry first so you can take it apart. Now, by doing that, I can lower this pipe down just a little bit, which will give me a little bit more space here. I'll show you. And that's, the, as I say, that's the wonderful thing about doing this kind of thing, is you're kind of making it up as you go, but with a little patience and not being too in too much of a hurry. I think that's going to look great. I'm working away at this. Again, putting it all together dry. With the first... This is the cold water lead running down. And terminated. Now this is the hot water lead I'm going to be working on. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So you try to heat it so that it'll overbend a little bit because you want to be able to play with it before it cools off to get it exactly where you want it to go. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Now this is my hot and cold for the outdoor shower. I'm not going to label them because the hot's right there. I mean, you can see the hot water comes out, comes up. Goes back down again, and then I will have my mixer. The mixer is going to go. I think. I think I'm going to try. I'm going to try tucking it right in here on a hinge of some sort, so that it can come out when you want it. So these guys are just going to have to connect to the back of that. Excellent. I think it's looking pretty good. Making connections with PEX piping. And PEX piping seems to be the standard for almost every motorhome trailer manufacturer. This is what they use in the units. They 
They, uh, they don't freeze as easily as copper does. They're easy to work with. They're less expensive than copper. And but anyway, that's what I'm gonna use. So the first thing we do is put on our little metal crimping ring. And I try to, I'm gonna put it on about halfway onto the, the little nose is sticking out there. And then this guy goes on. And now there's a special tool for crimping. You can buy these if you choose to. I've only got about 14 or 16 joints to make, so I've rented this one. It costs $10. And you see, it opens up, and if you, uh, this hand is gonna pull towards me, the jaw opens up more, and it locks there so you can use it with one hand. And then you'll wrap it around your fitting and let it off, I guess, okay? And now, it's just a matter of squeezing it. You only squeeze it so far, and once it locks, once it, it it's all the way down, it's done. That's what they say anyway. Looks pretty good. I've got some compression there. And that, well, if I can't move it, that's for sure. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go do the whole van. I've got now. the crimping all done. It didn't take 10 minutes. I couldn't believe how easy it was. There's two things I wanna share with you. The first is when you're doing your layout work, if you can, keep your connections all in one central place if possible, and then have home runs, that like one run that goes to every fixture that you need to run to. All my, the guts of it's right here in the van, and then I have two connections under the sink for the hot and cold water. Otherwise, I, it's, it's all right here. Easy to get to if there's ever an issue I have to deal with. There's, the second thing I want to share with you is make sure you have enough of these. This is the crimping ring. And that sample piece I did, I didn't count properly, that sample piece I did used up my last one. And I was one short. I had to run all the way into town, which for me was almost, was almost half an hour one way, I'll get in line and buy this 18 cent item. So make sure you have extras. You can always take them back if you, if you're not, uh, if you, if you don't use them all. Anyway, now what I'm going to do is connect the water pump. Well, did you see the mistake I made right here, this pump? I can't believe it. I really can't believe it, but I installed it exactly the way I said I didn't want to install it. I've got the water going into the tank, not pumping out of the tank. Boy, I'm so glad I found it when I did, because if this, if I'd filled the system to test it, which I almost did yesterday, and I had 10 gallons of water in here, and no way to get it out easily. Boy, that would have been a terrible thing to have happen. So I'm gonna take this pump and I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees. Okay, there we go. That's gonna have it back together again. It was an e Lucky for me, it was an easy fix. And in fact, it even gives these hoses a little extra space as well. So. And now we are complete. Holy smokes, dodge a, a bullet on that one. Thanks for watching to the end. Watch the other videos I've linked to here. They'll be useful as well. And check this out. My shower mixer goes on. It's on a hinge. When you're in the shower, you'll be able to use it. When you don't want to use it, you tuck it away. Pretty swanky, pretty swanky. Y'all come back now.